Okay, so I went ahead and brought the uh, big boy up, the 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain, and I'm gonna mount it on here and uh, drive it around a couple of times just so you can see how it sounds and uh, what it looks like with a, a bigger load on it. I think this is about 38 pounds or so, um, maybe not quite that much, but uh, if you were to get a camera and that kind of stuff on there, then uh, you're gonna be well over 40 pounds. So what I have here is the uh, 21 pound counterweight that comes standard with the mount when you buy it. I also bought an extra 11 pound counterweight. One thing that's kind of nice about these counterweights I've noticed is they've got the compression ring on the inside and uh, it gives you a really good feel when you tighten that down. Uh, it, it, just, it feels like it's very well locked. So uh, the recommendation is that you uh, disengage the gears so that this will swing freely and then add the counterweights first. This is the 21 pound. This is the 11 pound. Now I've had this on previously and I went ahead and made a mark on the counterweight shaft, uh, which I think is a smart thing to do. So you can uh, get pretty close to balance right out of the box. Toe saver, pretty important. And uh, that will swing free just like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lock the gears. And back off just slightly. And then I've also made a mark on the, uh, the declination plate up here and the the dovetail of the, the Schmidt Cassegrain uh, just to get me pretty close to balance. It'll be off just slightly because I don't have the diagonal and do shield and all that kind of stuff on there too, but that, that'll get me pretty close. So I'll let that drop in, tighten these down. just to make sure until I get that other one tightened down. I think I'm still off just slightly. Yeah, that needs to come up just a little there. This is another thing that I wish would kind of change. It's kind of hard to get a good grip on that knob right there, uh, just with the, the clearance for your finger. So you, you really have to use your fingertips to, to tighten it as opposed to really being able to get on it. And, uh, and tighten it down the way you feel like you, you should. I'm gonna go ahead and release the gear here. Now it does, once it swings away from this portion of the mount, you can get a better grip on it if you need to. So that's pretty well balanced. And this should be pretty well balanced as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and release that one. Now if I put it in pretty close to any orientation, it should stay pretty well balanced. Yeah, this one's still off just a little bit. Okay, so the way you fix that is pretty easy. Just kind of engage this again. So that one's nose heavy right now. Actually, I'll just take the uh, dew cap off. <coughs> See what that does. So just taking the dew cap off made it quite a bit uh, back end heavy. That's kind of surprising. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this. I'm gonna do it in this orientation so that it doesn't slide that way. If I do it in this orientation, it could slide right out the back. So I'm gonna do it this way. Just loosen these, slide it forward slightly. Tighten that 
back down. So that's pretty well balanced. Maybe uh, just very slightly back end heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and engage the gears. Because I know everyone wants to know how it sounds. So engage it, back off, it's tight. I engage that one, backed off, and it's tight. That's the hand controller. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. So I'm going to set it to speed 9 just by pushing the 9 button. And away it goes. So I'm going to do both of them at once, declination and RA. Sounds pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to run through the procedure real quick to find the zero position. Uh, normally you can just release the gears and eyeball it or make a mark. I think the, uh, the option in the hand controller is actually pretty good. So you just toggle down through the settings to uh, zero position and then search zero position. What I found is if you start with the counterweight bar just on the west side, so on this side of the uh, mount, it'll swing through like this and it'll find it a lot quicker than if you were to start on this side, on the east side. Because what it does is it swings to the east, it would have to swing all the way up, figure out that it's not there, and then swing all the way back. But if you start on this side, it only has to swing a little bit, and then the declination is kind of the same way. So I'm going to do search. It's going to come through. I found it right there, and then it moved back. It also found the declination and it's done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you what it sounds like when the motors stall. And there's no harm that can be done. They're stepper motors, they just slip. It's not a big deal. Um, so this is what it sounds like when it runs correctly. Now, as it's running, I'm gonna engage it a little bit more until the motor actually stalls. Sounds horrible, but you're not doing any damage whatsoever. So I just backed off very slightly, start up again, and it runs fine. So again, if I tighten it a little too much, right there, back off, and it runs fine. And again, Ioptron says you're not doing any damage at all to the motors. Uh, they're, they're made to slip like that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it was uh, beneficial to you. It was to me just to kind of get the mount up, set up and, uh, and move it around. I've only had it out under the stars uh, for a couple of nights now, and uh, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, I do recommend putting a little uh, pieces of tape, you know, to help with the balance, put a mark so you can start off correctly, uh, get to know the gears, where to engage them, disengage them, try it, play with it, and, uh, and see what you need to do to get your mount set up and, and running correctly. So I hope this helps you guys. Take care.